Hi and welcome. On this video, I'm going to show you how to use iconic ensembles to add orchestral elements and a cinematic vibe to your productions. I'm going to start with a very simple pop arrangement and then I'm going to play everything from scratch and we're going to get from this to this. Let's get started. The reason why Iconic Ensembles is great for modern music production is because all the presets are carefully designed to fit very well in an arrangement. This can be a fully orchestral arrangement, trailer music, but Iconic can blend really well with pop, rock, metal, hip hop, and any genre really. The other thing is that because it contains sections of instruments, it's really easy to use. Oftentimes when you add orchestral elements to a song, you don't necessarily want to have all the instruments separated like first violins, second violins, violas, first flute, second flute, and so on and so forth. You want a great sound straight out of the box that's instantly usable. So let me show you how easy it is to use Iconica in a pop arrangement like this. Here's the Cubase project that contains our song. As you can see, I have some markers right here. We are using Cubase 9.5 here. Uh, so I have my intro, verse, chorus, and we also have a second verse and second chorus, very typical pop structure. So let me play it to you so you can get an idea of how it sounds like without any of the stuff that we going to add later on. Let's start with the intro. First verse. Empty pockets on my coat, salt and lips, magnetic shore, seven years of passing notes, Let's move on to the chorus now. Lying down, the sky is my reflection. Lying low, I'm carried by the sea. And because on the second chorus we're introducing new elements such as the drums that come from Groove Agent and Real Bass, let me also play the second chorus for you. So as you can see, the structure is very typical for a pop track. It's a ballad, but the vocals are really ethereal and I want to support them with some nice orchestral arrangements, maybe a cinematic touch so I can create a nice color to the track. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is take care of my low end. When I check on the track, I see that the bass, the real bass, the electric bass starts in verse two. So the entire track up to this point doesn't have any bass. So I'm gonna create the bass using my orchestra, using Iconica ensembles. So let's try and do this. I've already loaded a few instances of Iconica ensembles. I've uh, loaded uh, the strings low, I've loaded the strings full ensemble, soaring strings, glockenspiel, timpanis, brass, everything that I think I'm gonna use for this song. Let's start with our strings low. Let me open the interface. I think in this case, I'm going to use the sustains. So I think this intro is, is really naked right now. I want to support this vocal hook right there. So let's start with the low end. Mod wheel. Empty pockets on so I use the mod wheel right there to fade out the strings so that they don't cut off 
abruptly. This is your friend. The mod wheel with iconic ensembles is your friend. It can really make a difference if you want to create expressive passages. The next thing I'm going to do for the low end is probably go straight to my chorus. Yes, right here, I think we need to have the low end. We need to have our basses. So just now we took care of our low end and now I have a nice foundation to build upon. So now the next thing I would do is get a little bit of groove, get a little bit of pulse. So I can start introducing some percussion. So I'm gonna start with the Grand Casa. This will add a little bit of pulse to the arrangement. I think the right time to introduce this is on the second part of the first verse. And then, of course, I'm going to carry on on the chorus. And I'm going to see if it works. So let's record the Grand Casa. I'm gonna go loud. So as you can see, at first, I'm just giving a pulse with the Grand Casa and then in the chorus, I get louder so I can get more impact. But one little tip, if you're using cinematic percussion, just try and play with low dynamics because in this way you get more low end. If you hit a like a snare or a kick drum super hard, you tend to lose a little bit of the low end. But if you play softly, you get a little bit more you know, kind of this open, really round low end. So when you hit harder, you get a little bit more attack, but you sacrifice a little bit of the low end. The next thing I'm going to record is the timpanis. And again, I'm going to use these for impact and for adding a bigness to the sound. And the great thing is that with Iconica, we also have the left and right mallets, so I can do rolls very, very easily. So let's try this. I'm gonna use these, I'm gonna use also the timpanis as a means for adding transition between the verse and the chorus. Now the timpanis not only add pulse and groove to the chorus, but also create those nice transition effects between the different parts of the song. So these roles really help build up the tension. 
Now, the next thing I want to record is, of course, these nice cinematic violins. And for this, I'm going to use the Soaring Strings preset. So let's bring it up. So I'm going to use Soaring Strings at the very beginning to set the mood. Let's try it. So that's great. Now we have a nice intro. I'm going to jump to the chorus and now I want to create a nice run before the chorus comes in. That's again a way to transition between the verse and the chorus so that I have the maximum impact. So I think I'm going to play like a quick run. The great thing with the Soaring Strings preset is that it really allows you to play super fast. So what I'm gonna do is start a little bit earlier, just before the chorus comes in. I'm gonna give a little bit of hint of strings and I'm gonna use the mod wheel to perform a crescendo. And then of course, I'm gonna do the, the scale run and I'm going to go straight into the chorus. So let's try that. And now we have our strings. Now, another thing that I did while I was performing this part was that, as you saw, if you noticed, I was using the mod wheel to control the dynamics. But the way I was doing it, I was listening to her voice. When she was singing, I was trying to, you know, just leave some space. I don't want to overlap those nice soaring melodies over her voice. So I was pulling down the dynamics when she, her voice is there and, and it's prominent. And when there are gaps between the vocals, I'm trying to fill them with these string lines. So that's very important. And it's much better if you do this at the performance stage when you're producing the track, rather than trying and do this with automation in the mixing stage, this is always gonna work better because you also change the timbre of the instruments. You're actually performing the piece by interacting with the vocals, interacting with your entire arrangement. I think what I'm gonna do now is add a few more synths. I want to fill up the space for the harmony to come out. So I'm going to use the Strings Full Ensemble preset. This preset is very versatile because it gives me staccatos, it gives me pizzicatos, spiccatos, sustains, tremolos. So that combined with the fact that I can also use the VST expression maps, it makes it a very, very powerful tool. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a part right here in this channel and I'm going to open my key editor in Cubase. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my articulations, and I think in the intro, I want to add a tremolo articulation like this. So now I can start performing straight away. I think I'm going to use, because right here, it's only the piano that gives me the harmonic content, but I also want to add a bit of strings so that it's fuller. And we've already added the soaring strings and the bass, but now we need to feel the harmony. So let's start with some tremolos. So there we go. Now we have our tremolo strings for the beginning. But let's say 
that in the first verse, I want to use this same preset to have pizzicatos in my arrangement. Give a little bit of pulse with the strings this time and also add new elements. It keeps the attention of the listener. So let's say I want to have some pizzicatos. I'm gonna go to my key editor and add some pizzicatos right there. So because I added these pizzicatos right there with the VST expression map, from now on, I'm going to play with pizzicatos. On my coat, salt and lips, magnetic shore. Seven years of passing notes, bold and so now is the time to introduce the new element. Blissful paradise we made with an apple made of clay. Glassy angels paint the scene. China rose under my skin. And there we go. Now we also have our pizzicato strings. Now, of course, if you want, you can go ahead and quantize all these parts. But when it comes to orchestral elements, just be gentle with quantizing because you want this kind of human element to your performances. So even if you're adding the notes uh, with your mouse, I would still try and vary the timings because it makes it more natural, it makes it sound more real. So even if it's not right on the grid, it will still give you a nice human element and more realistic touch. Right, now the next element I want to record is something to enhance and support these vocal hooks, uh, like in the very beginning and of course, the chorus. So I think it's time to add a glockenspiel. And of course I'm using the glockenspiel from the Iconic Ensembles. Very, very beautiful sound. And I think this will enhance those vocal hooks that we have right there. So I'm going to follow the melody and maybe sometimes I'm, co I'm going to do some counterpoint with them. Let's play from the beginning till the first chorus. Let's add some more notes here. And there we go, very, very delicate element, but it really, really makes a difference. It really helps kind of underline those vocal lines and of course counterpoint some parts of the vocals. And come on, let's face it, it's also a great sound. So what I wanna do now is add some woodwinds to this arrangement. And in this case, I'm going to use the woodwinds high preset and I'm going to use the legato articulation. My aim is to enhance those soaring strings lines with flutes and to add a little bit of more top end, a little bit of brilliance to the arrangement. So let's start. Now, the great thing is that with the woodwinds high, I have flutes, of course, I have dynamics with the mod wheel. And it goes down to clarinets. And oboes. So quite a 
large palette of colors right there. So I think I'm gonna start playing from the very beginning and go straight to the chorus. And I'm gonna use the entire range. So maybe now I can move to the low registers, maybe some clarinets, maybe some oboes. Now, I feel the chorus has way more impact now that we've added all those elements from the iconic ensembles, but I think we need a little bit more groove. And because I don't want to add drums to this, I want to keep this contained within the iconic ensembles universe. So I think I'm going to add some snares, some snare rolls, so that we get a little bit more movement. So I have the percussion map right here, which I used also for the Grand Casa. But this time I'm going to use this snare. And of course, that's a very, very useful preset because you have all the elements right there. So if I decide I want to add more elements later on while I'm arranging, everything is right there. I don't need to open any more instances and start loading new sounds. So all the percussion that I might need is there. So let's record some snares. You will see that I'm also using the snares to add a nice transition effect so I can have more impact on the chorus. So I'm using these rolls where I can control the dynamics with the mod wheel and I'm creating this crescendo. So I'm going to use that when the chorus comes in. And there we go, snares sorted. Great, so now that we've reached to this point, I think it's time to think what are we going to do with our second chorus. So the second chorus is exactly the same, but we have electric bass and we also have drums, which means that I need to leave some space for these instruments now. So I need to kind of think about my arrangement in, with a different scope. So let's copy some stuff around. I'm going to copy the entire first chorus to the second chorus. And now let's decide which elements we want to keep and which elements we want to meet in this second chorus. I think that we can still keep the timpanis, maybe we can add a little bit of filtering in the low end so that we leave some space for these big drums right here from Groove Agent. I think that maybe the Grand Casa could stay, but it needs to be lower in the mix, but we need to let the strings low go. So I'm going to mute this part because now the low end is taken care of by the electric bass right here. I think another element we also need to omit is the snares because we have some really nice interesting drums right there, so we don't want them to clash. So let's mute 
this part as well. And now what I'm going to do to differentiate this second chorus to the first even more is record some nice brass. And in this case, I'm using the brass low accent sustain preset from Iconic Ensembles. And I only need the legato articulation. So I'm only going to load the legato articulation and play some cutter melodies against those soaring strings. So let's get started. Let's record our brass. And maybe now we want to make the sound a little bit more majestic. So what I would do is add a few more brass. So I'm going to add the brass low accented sustain preset from Iconic Ensembles and basically use that to enhance the bass and the low end without adding real low end because I don't want this to clash with my bass. So this sounds really, really beautiful. Because the sound is layered, we get a very defined attack because we have the Mercado articulation right there. And it's also layered with the sustains that give us these nice fluctuations in volume if we use the mode wheel. Now, if I open my frequency analyzer on the channel settings on this brass preset, you will see that that the low end is not really dominating, which means that right now what I'm doing is I'm enhancing this bass line, I'm enhancing this kind of electric bass line with our low brass, but the low frequencies won't clash because these brass sounds don't have this really, really dominating low end that will basically make your mix muddy. So actually they work really, really well, even without any filtering. But of course we can help with a little bit of filtering if I do a very gentle filter like this. So let's try and record now. And just by using all those different elements from Iconic Ensembles, I can have a completely different color in the first chorus, beautiful orchestrations. And then I can develop these ideas and go into the second chorus and change the instrumentation a little bit, make it fit with the rest of my arrangement. As you can see, the sounds blend really, really well. I'm not doing any intense mixing over there. Of course, I would still go and mix this, but to begin with, it sounds really nice. It blends really well with the rest of the arrangement. So again, let's listen to the first chorus. And now let's go to the second chorus and let's see how iconic ensembles blend really, really nicely with the drums, with the bass, with the guitars. We have like four guitars over there. which of course dominate quite a bit of space in the frequency spectrum. So it still works really, really beautifully. So let's play the second chorus now.
So there you go. That's how easy it is to arrange with iconic ensembles in the context of a pop track. As you can see, all the sounds are ready to go. You don't need to tweak them or load like a million articulations or a million different presets. I mean, I've only loaded a handful of iconic ensemble instances here and I have a complete orchestral arrangement. So this is how you can use the Iconica Ensembles library to add a cinematic vibe and an orchestral touch to your pop arrangements. If you're interested in listening to the finalized song, please visit the audio demos on the Iconica Ensembles page. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.